guys, what's up? It's Charlie. I'm just kidding. I'm not doing ASMR, okay? Imagine me doing an entire tutorial just doing ASMR. That's not what this video is about. But yeah, I have six Adobe Illustrator tricks for you guys today. And these tricks are just like tools and different things you could do with them that will really help your skill set, almost like a tool belt. Basically, these tricks will help you become a better designer by the end of the video. First trick today has to do with the blend tool. The blend tool allows you to do so many things in Illustrator. You can use it with other effects such as 3D. So let's go up to effect 3D materials and I'm gonna use 3D classic for this and let's rotate it. What we're gonna do is do an off axis top down or actually it's bottom if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there we go. So that's all we need to do. We're gonna press okay. And as you can see our logo 3D, what we wanna do is expand it though. So let's go up to object, expand appearance. And then we also wanna merge it under Pathfinder and then make it a compound path, which is found under this little stacked menu. Now that that's a compound path, we're ready to apply our blend effect, which is not going to have any issues because this is a compound path. So I'm gonna click and drag this up on the Y axis. I'm gonna hold an option or alt if you're on a PC click and drag while holding and shift to lock it to that Y axis. Now we just need to select the bottom one and make it a different color. As you can see on the very top, all of your colors disappeared and that's simply because this is a compound shape now. All we have to do is go to our properties and you will see fill. That's where you could change the color to whatever you want. Let's go with a grayish color. Now press W on your keyboard and it will go to your blend tool. And from here we can actually hold an option or alt if you're on a PC left click that will bring up blend options and this is the engine that drives the blend tool and under spacing i like to use specified steps i usually keep it between four and eight i'm going to use four for this exact one i'm not going to align it to a path or anything like that so i don't need to mess with orientation i'm just going to press ok now now let's left click on our top layer and our bottom layer and you're going to see it automatically blend now the black layer is actually below the gray layer at the bottom, which is why it's overlapping weird. So all you have to do is select that top layer, double click on it twice and bring that to the front. And as you can see, it is now in order. It is hard to see the colors, but the beautiful thing about the blend tool is it will actually update live, which means we can add a stroke to our top layer, for example, let's make it white. And let's go about two points with this. And if I click off of it, you could see that that updates in real time, which is awesome. You can also change the direction of this effect just by selecting the top or bottom layer and moving it around. You might run into an issue depending on your version of Adobe Illustrator. Mine, if I let go, you're gonna see it go back to the original position. You can fix this by going to Pathfinder and just clicking expand, going to give you the results that you're looking for, of course, but uh, it never did this before. And I'm not sure why their update just completely destroyed this tool. But nonetheless, that's the workaround that I found. Let me know in the comments if you find another workaround. Trick number two is of course with the blend tool again, this time we're gonna create a custom color palette. To do this, you can use any shape you want and you just need to create two different colors. So first one, I'm gonna make it a green color like we have on the top example. And let's make this one much darker so we can see the contrast. Keep in mind whatever layer is on top, on the layers palette will be on top with this blend option, okay? So we do wanna make sure we send that to the front. Now let's press W on our keyboard to go to the blend tool. All you have to do from here is hold an option or alt if you're on a PC, left click, and it will bring up the engine, which is called blend options. From here, just choose how many colors you want in your palette. For this one, I'm gonna choose four, to keep it really simple. And then orientation, just keep it as is aligned to page. Under spacing, you wanna select specified steps and how many colors do you want in your palette? I'm gonna choose eight for this example. We're gonna go extreme. I normally wouldn't use more than four. Keep orientation default, press okay. Now left click on the green and left click on the black and you will see that it blends it automatically. We only have two colors, keep in mind, the green and the black, okay? So you can change these two colors at any time and it will update everything in between. So let's try that out. Press A on your keyboard, select the first color change it to let's say a yellow, it doesn't really matter what color you wanna go with. And as you can see, it updated everything in between. Alternatively, we can select the black color and change it to anything we want as well, and it will update it automatically. That was good so far, right? Let's go ahead and take a quick breath and thank our sponsor over at Aplique. Aplique is your all-in-one solution for print-on-demand. They integrate with your favorite e-commerce platforms such as Shopify, and they don't believe in monthly payments, so you can integrate their app with your Shopify store and start selling your favorite merch such as hats, t-shirts, hoodies, you name it. This next trick has to do with mezzotint. I never know how to say that name. Mezzotint. 
Close enough. But it's an amazing way to texture and I love it. Here's how I do it. So we could delete the texture version now and just center this clean version. Again, this is just a black and white image. It's actually just black if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So there's no white in there. And if you want to do this with color, just make sure that you apply this effect first, then apply the color after. So you'd have to fill all the areas in with the color after the fact. With that in mind, all you have to do is go up to effect and then you want to go all the way down to pixelate and then select mesotint. If you click on that little drop down menu, you will see a bunch of different grain types. Now go through them and see which one you like the most. I usually stick to grainy dots or coarse dots. For this example, let's go to coarse dots because it's much more extreme texture. And I want to show you guys this in its full glory. As an added bonus tip, you can always apply a small blur to this to help the grain look less predictable, if you will. So what I usually do is I go to effect, blur, and then add a Gaussian blur. You don't want to go too crazy with this. I usually stick around one to two pixels. Now it's a rasterized image, just like Photoshop, but we're not done yet. We need to go all the way up to image trace, click on that. You may be tempted to hit that big expand button at the very top next to tracing results, but don't do that, okay? Let's follow expand to the left. You're gonna see a little menu that says image trace panel. And this, my friends, is the engine that drives this texture. Now, if I bring threshold over to less side, you're gonna see it update and it's going to apply more texture. Under noise, we can also change the amount of noise texture that we have in our image. Mine is currently set to 25 pixels, but let's bring it down a little bit. Actually, that was a lot, but that's fine. That's extreme, as you can see. So we want to bring it kind of more towards the one. So maybe around 16 pixels is fine. This is a balancing act, and your image is going to look different than mine. So play with these levels and have fun with it. There's a hidden secret here that most people miss. You want to go all the way down until you see ignore white. Go ahead and check that. This will delete all the white out of your image, leaving you with just the black vector graphic which is perfect, especially if you want to save this as an SVG, a PNG, EPS, PDF, whatever you want. Fourth on my trick list is distort and transform. You can find that by heading up to the top bar, go to effect, find distort and transform. And under here, I'm going to use something called pucker and bloat. I use pucker and bloat all the time to make stars. So let me show you how that works. So let's get rid of this real quick and then bring over this brand new circle. You can also just make a circle right here using the obviously the ellipse tool, right? With pucker and blow, it allows you to basically warp a shape. And this can be done with any shape. So we're gonna go up to effect, again, distort, transform, pucker and blow. When you click on that, you're gonna see pucker and blow pop up. And this is the control for this effect. So selecting your shape, you can move this left and right, and it's going to create some really awesome, unique shapes. And if I go to the left, we have more of that diamond shaped star, which is so cool in my opinion. I love using these on my design work. Bonus tip, if you don't know how to make a triangle, go to your shapes and head down to the star tool. Here you wanna hold an alt or option and left click. A star has three points, so we wanna make sure we select three, press okay. And there you go, we have a triangle. We can rotate it if we want to, it's really up to you. And then if we go back up to effect, distort and transform, pucker and bloat, we could do the same exact thing. It just creates some really cool effects that are honestly super unique and not a lot of people know about them. The next trick has to do with the scissors tool. I love this tool so much. I use it all the time to create stuff like this smiley face. Here's how you can do it. First, let's get this out of the way. Move it right here, fine. And then let's go to the ellipse tool. You can also press L on your keyboard and just hold and shift to drag out a perfect circle. If we wanted this to be perfectly center, you just wanna find the center of your artboard, which is right here. And then just hold and shift option or alt, like I said, if you're on a PC, and it will keep that centered. Kind of a cool little bonus tip there. Next, I wanna copy this by pressing Command C, Shift Command V, and then I'm gonna hold in Shift Option, click and drag down, and there you go. Now I have a circle inside of a circle. So now let's head over to the scissor tool, which can be found on this left toolbar, or you can just press C for cut, which is the scissor tool. Now that I'm selecting that scissor tool, I can hover over my center circle, and you're going to see something called anchor. When you see this, that means that's the center of your circle. So you wanna actually left click, that's going to cut it. You wanna left click again, that's gonna cut it. Now we can select the top part and delete it. So now we have the smiley face of the circle. If I go to my stroke menu, you can see that I am rounding the corners. That's why they're not flat like they normally are, but that's totally your preference. You can change it if you want. And if we wanted to, we could thicken these strokes up quite a bit, kind of like that. Now all we have to do is make two ovals, one for each eye, of course. Make two ovals for the eyes and you're pretty much done. And the cool thing about this is you can move all these shapes around and do basically whatever you want. You can put your smiley face right here on the corner and then have the eyes really, really big and spread out. It's really up to you. If you want them looking left, you can just put them to the left. You can make the most wacky smiley face you've ever seen. 
Last but not least, we have the Intertwine tool, which is a brand new tool Adobe introduced to Illustrator last month, and it saves so much time, especially for logo designers that are trying to overlap strokes on top of one another. As you can see, I've already done it here with this planet shape. I have a circle and an oval, and I overlap certain sections on top of each other, and that is just exactly why it's so great. It saves you so much time from having to like make duplicate copies. It's just, it's a nightmare doing it that way. So now we can do this, check this out. So let's make an ellipse first. We'll just add a stroke on it and then we could duplicate this and then make an oval kind of how I already had. Now we have two shapes and we have two strokes. So what we could do is select both of them, go up to object, go down to intertwine and then make. Before you press anything, pay attention to your cursor. It just changed. Now you have a little lasso tool with a direct selection tool pointing up. That is how you know it worked. So now we can just circle the areas that we want to overlap. And as you can see, it doesn't always work perfectly. At least on my machine, I'm using an M1 Max chip. And for some reason, it's just, it's very buggy. If you run into any issues, you can always go up to object, intertwine, and then release. And it will release that intertwine that you just did. And then you could start over. So let's go back up to object, intertwine, make. And now it worked, of course. So there you go. That's just how the tool is. Sometimes it's buggy, but when it works, it works and it works great. If you're a new or existing subscriber and you made it this far into the video, give yourself a pat on the shoulder, clap, do whatever you gotta do to make yourself feel good, okay? Cause you are awesome. And I hope you truly learned something new in this video. And my average view duration is way up because of you guys, okay? So thank you so much. Before you leave, consider watching my Home Depot logo redesign. That one was fun and they were in need of a logo revamp, trust me.